of the oil wars. Hell, most of you have been on the front lines as the United Americas, the three world empire and the union of progressive peoples have faced each other down over scarce oil reserves. Too many fronts, not enough grunts, as the saying goes. The United America's Allied Command, the UAAC, and the Colonial Marines maintain an uneasy peace as protesters and insurgents cause trouble across the colonies. This is true of the United America's refining and fueling station on the frozen moon Ariarchus in the Kruger 60 system with its oil production and space elevator reaching into orbit from the ground. But the colony, colony is in turmoil and decline. The 2180 Wayland yutani census cataloged 200,000 colonists on Ariarchus. In the three years since then, all but about 2,000 have abandoned the moon for greener pastures. Whilst the military needs of the USCMC are still being serviced, most of the are still ser being serviced, most of the colony is now a little more than a ghost town. One week ago, the United uh, the Union of Progressive Peoples annexed the nearby 61 Signy system. All communication with the colony there on LV038 was abruptly lost. In response, Allied Command assembled a fleet to take back 61 Signy using the Fort Nebraska refueling station in the Kruger 60 system as a staging ground. That, my friends, is where you are. You expected to be passing through Nebraska on your way to war, but each of you Marines were pulled from your companies before they went FTL leaving you stranded at the fort on the volatile colony moon, Ariarchus. One of the largest oil producers in the colonies, Ariarchus is also a hotbed of insurgency. With the UPP moving in on Kruger 60 next, the United Americas has decided to cut its losses and evacuate the colony. But as of this morning, that evacuation was suspended. All civilian and military transports were grounded with no explanation given. With the insurgency problem, barely a skeleton crew of military personnel and nearly 2,200 divided colonists stuck moonside, it's only a matter of time before the situation blows up. Now, Major Hatfield from the infamous Sin Eaters unit has summoned you for a special moonside mission. Every Marine has heard of Hatfield, a real soldier who always puts duty first, and lost his arm as a result. His remaining left hand is always resting on the brass hilt of his antique U.S. model 1852 Marine sword, with its shark skin grip bound by gilt wire, his hand grips the hilt as he walks and paces back and forth, and he begins to speak all of you who are standing at attention in front of him within Fort Nebraska. Okay, listen up. Everything you're about to hear is need to know. And no one else needs to know. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can't hear you. Is that understood? Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> As of 0200 hours, a four-man Marine squad went AWOL from this base with classified intelligence. Intelligence that in the wrong hands will mean life or death on the frontier. Intelligence that simply cannot fall into enemy hands. Command believes the AWOLs plan to make contact with the Moon's insurgents and defect to the UPP. We're looking for Wojcik, Carvalho, Wright, and Reese. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share with you images of what these four individuals look like as he shouts them out to you in his aggressive military way. <laughs> so this first one I'm going to show to players and hopefully you can't see all the details of them. So I'm going to show that to everyone. Can you guys see uh, Wojcik here? 
Uh-huh. Okay, that's yep. your first. Can, you guys can't really see anything underneath them, can you? Okay. No. Okay. You would you would know that their first their full name is Emilio Emilio Wojcik, and age about 30, uh, 31. Then you get uh, Private First Class uh, Carvalho. You're going to see that image pop up. Do you guys see that image pop up as well? Yep. Yep. That's Carvalho. Uh, first name Isaac, age twenty six. Then we've got. Lance Corporal or Corporal Lance Wright here. Let me show or Lance Corporal Wright. Show to players. Show to everyone. Here is the third of those A walls. Uh, this would be Jamie Wright, age twenty nine. And finally, we got Lance Corporal Reese. I'm going to show this to everyone. This is. I guess it's Wilby Reese, uh, age 32. So you guys are, are given those, and he basically says, uh, here's their ugly mugs and all the info we have on them. Everything else about them is classified. I want you to find these defectors for me, confirm their identities, as well as the identities of any other person that they've passed this information to, and bring them in. For the duration, your Charlie team. I will coordinate, I will coordinate from Fort Nebraska. All communication will go through me on a secure channel. We are thin on leads, so start at the spaceport or that dive bar oblivion down the street. Some asshole there has got to have seen them. Remember, there are ins insurgents out there too, so stay alert. Wait a second. I see some of those looks. I know you've never worked together professionally before, but I cherry-picked your asses because each of you is the best at what you do. So get her done. Oh, and one last thing. Deadly force is authorized. Do I make myself clear? Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know what you're thinking, and you need to forget that shit. These bastards are not Marines any longer than they are traitors, and they are shit yourself dangerous. Your orders are to bring them in alive if you can, but if they present a clear and present threat, you shoot and you shoot to kill. I'll ask again, am I clear? Sir, yes, sir. I can't hear you! Sir, yes, sir! sir. Yes, sir. All right. On the ready line, Marines, fall in and move out. And that's your beginning. Okay. <laughs> well, that like. So, you guys, a squad together, been kind of cherry-picked from different groups that have come. So you haven't probably, some of you may have developed over the last couple of weeks, maybe a relationship with each other. That's what your buddy and rival kind of thing comes up on your character sheet. So, relationships minimal, but still, you got kind of got firm understanding on who each other are. Uh, who you are and what you're good at, what your gifts are, what your positions are amongst the squad. Uh, you guys actually um, are ushered to a sub-level sub -level staging area where you see a battered M577 APC that's currently being refueled. And you're also seeing an open door to what seems to be a massive weapon storage. So, if there's anything that you need to equip... You have free reign of this staging area within Fort Nebraska. If you'd like to take any extra ammunition, anything of that nature to go with what you have, it's up to you guys. So, I guess I'll ask, can we stock the APC with more? You can. Or, is it, or does it come with us? <laughs> is it encumbered? Um, it, could, it could go on the APC. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Um, <laughs> I don't know exactly how much <laughs> but I can look <laughs> yeah 
Yes, sir. I say we stock up that APC with as much as we can possibly care. We gotta get this thing loaded. God only knows what we're gonna run into out there. I thought we were going to the bar. Yeah, but we're gonna go to the bar and then launch. This is our, maybe our only spot to, to to load up. Sorry. Expect that much trouble? If there are insurgents out there. They'll be looking to take a pop shot any chance they get. I say we stock up on some med kits as well. That is probably wise. Yeah. I only have a single one. Uh, I'm a medic, so I can I I could use some more kits. That would be a good thing. I also need all I've got is this uh, pulse rifle, and it's it's not very good at close combat. Or um, I could use a uh, uh, some kind of pistol, a uh, knife. Something for close combat range. Um, it's not going to do this uh, pulse rifle. Ain't going to do me much good in a bar. All right, then let's go check out the armory. Okay. Grab any additional weapons, knives, pistols, any weapons you want to switch. Everyone, grab extra ammo and med kits, and let's stock the APC. All right, Roger that. So I will say, just to keep it reasonable, I will say that each of you can probably. Get whatever whatever weapons that your your primary weapons are. I would say that you guys can stock up to like five reloads for each one of your weapons within the APC, as you're just grabbing like ammunition cases and taking them out and putting them in there. Also, I will give. Uh, so, uh, Chaplin said that he had only had one med kit. Yep. I will say that you get an additional med kit, and then I believe that Mason was going to grab some med kits too. Yeah. I'll see. So yeah. each of you have two med kits at your disposal now. Okay. Yeah. And then um, Chaplin's also going to look. Is there any sort of like a uh, basically a trank gun? Trank gun. Hmm. I don't know if there is. <laughs> they do have a couple bolt guns. <laughs> but they have definitely this this is military so like i mean there's a yeah. bunch of like those um uh pulse rifles yeah. and stuff like i mean if you walk in like a a weapons department of a you know a military there'd be like just guns like lining up all the way down there so it's really up to you because you guys are in the in the base well fortunately i'm skilled in subduing <laughs> people in unarmed combat so if we can get close enough that'll be good i break this but where um do we put rounds and stuff in our sheet you can put it as a note uh under where it says okay. gear um yeah because remember like bullets only run out on your weapons when you panic when you shoot them okay okay so that's the only time you need to worry about like reloading and stuff they don't track individual ammunition in this game. Okay. Okay. I thought I was missing something. Thank you. And you said for the reloads for our weapon, we could pick up five to put in the uh, APC. Yes, five each. Uh, if if you don't want to, if you don't want to like carry them around and and bother with like encumbrance and things like that, which you guys have access to this APC. So, um, also looking at. Um, gunnery sergeant mason's character sheet if you when you go through your tabs on weapons you do have your number third your third weapon is a service pistol that's what i was looking for thanks i yep. forgot to look under that tab yep and you also have your fifth tab is a combat knife so you do have both of those items uh at the ready okay mm -hmm. My guy's just going through the ammo store and just like grabbing magazines and like sticking them like inside his like flak jacket, like in his boots. He's got like pieces of ammunition coming out of like every spot. Uh, Private mm -hmm. Hammer is grabbing some um, bullets too. He looks over at you, Zim, and is like, "What's the matter? Are you nervous?" Nah, I don't get nervous. I just like to be prepared. Thanks, though. Right. And I'm just I'm just sticking <laughs> back, watching everyone, making sure that 
no one's taking anything that they shouldn't take <laughs> or storing something in the side somewhere for later to try and sell on the market for some extra cash. Yeah, Iona, why are you carrying that nuclear missile? <laughs> it's like, put, put that back. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So after spending a little bit of time gathering up some of this ammunition and putting it onto the ABC, APC, loading it up, uh, you guys feel confident that you have a stocked APC. Your APC also ha has two turrets upon it. Um, one is a like a like a phase uh, tur turret, phase blaster turret, and the other one is like a Gatling gun turret. That's on the front of it. So it does have weapons and can be fired from inside. I believe that Sergeant Iona is the uh, the driver of the, the of the crew. Um. So in, we'll unless see. unless somebody wanted to co compete with Iona for that seat, but. <laughs> well, you know me. I'm a rifleman first and a vehicle operator second. So, Sergeant, it's all yours. After our taking stock, I will tell, I'm going to tell everyone when you're done, stock up, go in the APC, get your seats ready, store it where you need to, lock everything up. All right. So as you guys get into the APC, Iona takes a seat in the driver's position. Uh, APC is actually pretty cool. If you've seen the movie Aliens, it does have like kind of like a mini command center in the back of it too. That like a commander could sit at and like watch through body cams of live occurrences and see what is happening, and also see like um, you know the the health readouts of your squad as as they're running by the screens as well. Um, so everyone has like these little uh, I think they're called like PDATs or something that are attached to them that. Yeah, there it is. That's the Yay. APC. Yep. <laughs> so you guys are in one of those currently. It can hold up to fifteen passengers, which is pretty extensive. Um, they're not they're not quite tanks because they don't have like a giant gun on them or anything like that. They're more and, and tanks only carry like four or five people. So this is more of a you know, you put your whole squad in here. It's armored enough that you can get from place to place with uh, having a little bit of defense. So I'm going to go ahead and move you guys to a different map in roll 20. I'm going to take you guys over to Ariarchus. Are you guys able to see that pop up onto your screen? Yes. Yep. All right. Currently, I have a little token on there that's glowing green that says APC. And I have it parked just right outside of Fort Nebraska right there for you guys. I think you guys all have control of that APC. And this is the map. I'm gonna take us. I'm gonna take Twitch over there too, so they can see what's going on. Yeah, you guys are right there at Fort Nebraska, and you've got these districts. And this place is cold. I mean, it is freezing here. It's like light snow, high winds. It doesn't ever get like daylight or dark here. It's always kind of like twilight because there's no direct sunlight on this moon. It's all just the reflect reflection of light off this blue gas giant planet that this moon kind of uh, revolves around. So that is, that's the kind of nature of this place. It's not light out, but it's not like pitch black or anything like that. It's always just like this middle ground when it comes to light. So the, uh, the two places that Hatfield suggested that you start, which you don't have to, it's up to Captain Silva, uh, but the spaceport down here to the south, I'm going to try to shift ping you guys if I can. Spaceport down here, and I've also got the, uh, the Oblivion Bar, which is in district, located in the district south, this, this direction. So you got these two places that you were suggested. Of course, there are other places on this map as well that you're free to explore if you'd rather do that. But that's up to the captain. <laughs> I'm going to follow the Major's orders. We got the first hint. We're going to start at the bar, make our way down there, see what intel we get. And from there, we'll redirect accordingly. So, Iona, take us there. All right. <laughs> All right. 
Ayola, you can go ahead and as you're traveling oh, through no. through town, you you can move the APC down there oh, to God, the uh, roll. To, to like no, you don't have to roll because you you've done this before. I mean, you're just cruising down the street, uh, and like and like I said in the uh, the beginning, it's this place is like a ghost town now. Like a lot of people have left. There's not many people here. Most of these places are run down. Places are empty. Uh, the people that are that are here, some of them are already like, hey, hey, this place is pretty much UPP controlled anyway, so I'll just I'll just be with them. Some of these people are just barely making it by, um, and you guys cruise down to the Oblivion Bar. Now, when you pull up, there is like a thumping of bass that you can hear outside, like is is dead as this town has been driving through this like the snowy alleys and streets this place seems like it's popping what do you guys do um i'll exit the vehicle I'll, right before i exit the vehicle vehicle first i'm gonna tell everyone stay calm stay relaxed don't do anything stupid but be ready and then open the door and i walk out Okay. Leather. I will follow. We'll look over at Mace yeah. for a second. Should we be bringing our weapons in with us? He was not clear. <laughs> Taking uh, close combat stuff, I doubt that I'll need the uh, um, the rifle or my incinerator inside. Captain, you want us all to follow you in, or you want to go on this on your own? No. Two people will stay outside. Iona will stay out with the vehicle, along with picking... I'll let Iona choose one other. Pick someone you trust, and you two will stay in guard, watch the vehicle. rest of us, follow me in. Don't forget, you guys will also have Private Hammer and Dante as well with you, so you have two additional people. Chaplain, buddy, do you want to stay out here with me, man? If that is what the captain would like. I suppose it is, dude. If All right, I... Chaplain. And then I'll turn the hammer, and I whisper to hammer, as soon as we get inside, stand by the door, keep eyes open. Yo, you got it, Captain. Hammer kind of smirks. You, and you know that Hammer's been, like, in some trouble recently. Like, he got into, like, a fight with another Marine and really messed him up. <laughs> so. Wasn't me this time. My guy Smievsky looks visibly disappointed about having to go inside this bar with the music and the people and he just looks ever so slightly disgusted by the concept but he's got a strong jaw and he tightens up and he's got his pulse rifle we're walking in all right you got it so you guys enter uh the oblivion uh, iona and um uh we've got uh, iona and chaplain waiting outside guarding the apc all the equipment there so I'm going to take you guys to a different map. We're going to go into the Eye of Oblivion bar. I'm going to change our music here a little bit so we can get some more appropriate um, music. Get you guys in the uh, atmosphere here. We are flipping over there. Real quick question for you. You said that in the command center that there were screens where you could watch like body cameras that we're all wearing. Mm hmm. Chaplain is going right up there, sitting down, and is just going to be watching, specifically flipping through and looking, okay, what's Captain doing? What's Zim doing? What's Mason doing? And just flipping through, watching. Yeah. Well, there's several screens, so you can watch them all simultaneously if you want. Yep, yep. <laughs> Good idea, man. I, like, never get back here. This is cool. <laughs> As Captain has all the toys. <laughs> As I should. <laughs> so, one thing that you will notice as you guys walk in here is this place is pretty crowded. There is an extensive amount of people here. 
uh, there is kind of an S-shaped um, bar area as you come in the entrance. I have all your tokens up there at the top, so if you want to... The, the entrance is at the very top of the map, and you can see that there's an S-shaped bar that goes there, and there are several different um, dancers that are dancing upon the top of the bar in various places. You do see that there is someone tending the bar. Uh, looks like a female... Uh, individual who is walking around kind of picking up glasses and removing them from the bar, moving them over, the, over different places. There is another female uh, sitting at the bar. Seems to be kind of drowning her sorrows currently, uh, sitting there with a very, very large uh, drink. There are people around all over the place uh, talking with one another, um, just all around. Um, mm bass is rumbling the smoke almost stings your eyes and nostrils from the cigarettes and other things um you get it, the, the lighting is like you get these neon bright like flashes through the smoke and you can see the dancers almost silhouetted at times behind the bar there um but like i said while the most of the colony is a ghost town this oblivion seems to be doing pretty well <laughs> I want, I want to observe if um, who's taking notice of our entry. Okay, uh, go ahead and make our first roll. You can make an observation roll for us. You should have a... I believe there's an observation roll. There we go. Uh, I just submit. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Oh, two successes. There, there you go. Nicely done. Um. Now, as you're kind of looking around immediately, like you guys are obviously military. You're walking in with your military garb. Most of you still have your guns on you, uh, <laughs> which right. are pretty much military standard issue. Like, you know, <laughs> they, these people know that uh, here at, at Ariarchus. You walk in and you can see that some people take notice, especially over there on the kind of like the right hand side of the map. It looks like they're having a party. It looks like they're celebrating the end of the world. Like they're having this end of the world. Hey, let's just get let's celebrate and get drunk. Um Upon coming in, Mason, as soon as you come into your right, there is this... I'm going to shift ping you right here. There's these two individuals that are chilling here. Look like they're in kind of like street clothes. They got like heavy jackets on and stuff. One of them with that observation roll, you would see, does look a little bit nervous. So I follow in behind Mason and I ask him, what do you see? Uh, uh, the two of them will meet at a site and looks nervous. Uh, I'm trying to remember if they look like the people that we saw that the uh, captain showed us. Yeah, with that, with your successful observation roll, doesn't look like the images that you saw. That's them. Yeah. Gotcha, so then... Um, I'll turn to Mason and say, if you see anyone interesting, go ahead and speak to them. I'm going to go talk to the bartender. Uh, Captain, how about I stand back and watch the door and just keep an eye on you guys while you go through? Sounds good. Okay. So. so. So you're going to approach the bar as Zemieski is going to stand kind of by the entrance area? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of posting up, trying not to look too scary, but obviously not relaxed either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gotcha. And, and, and um, Chaplin and Iona, these cameras also do audio, so you can hear all this in the APC as well. It's not just a visual representation. You can hear it. Um, so, oh, Captain, yeah? question then when mason noticed the other two would would we have been able to see what he was seeing would we have seen those two people yeah 
Yeah, probably. I mean, uh, he's moving kind of back and forth, so I would assume that the camera is picking up all the angles of the Oblivion bar. It's hard to see through the video because of all the, like, flashing neon lights and the smoke just filling the room and stuff. But you can definitely uh, catch the those two individuals, and you can definitely tell that, like, the, the volume of the music is coming through the audio, too, so sometimes it does make it a little bit distorted at times. So I'll do a <clears throat> I'll do a com check with Chaplin, and um, I'm going to say Chaplin, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. It is a little difficult though, as you are in a very loud room. Copy that. Make sure you record what we're saying when we talk to these people. If you pick anything up, keep us abreast of anything you see. Yes, sir. And we'll start recording on everyone's... Just start recording everything. <laughs> just start recording everything? Okay, excellent. Excellent. With a couple of... All of, all of them, even the ones just... Stand, the two standing outside. You got Zim it. standing at the door. Just, now full recording on everyone. Meanwhile, the APC's memory storage is like... <laughs> <laughs> gigabytes upon gigabytes start palling in. <laughs> awesome. Okay. We have, we have a new SSD M2 in there, so it's okay. Oh, you're all, you're all good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, what, what were you saying, Mason? I'm going to sit my head in the restroom for a minute. Okay. Okay. Just check that one, D. Okay. Yeah, just, just peeking in the restroom over there? Yep. Yep. You look in there, there's nothing there. Nobody's Nobody's in the restrooms. Currently, one of them leaks, right, back up. <laughs> but no one's currently in there. Um, so, Captain Silva, you approach the bar. Um, there is a dancer, a uh, female dancer, that starts to kind of like dance over near you a little bit, and it's just like, you know, kind of groove and just looks at you and kind of gives you a little little head nod. I acknowledge her, and I kind of hint her to come over and come closer. Okay. And yeah, she's as she comes closer, I'm waiting. Um, and then I pull out some money and I say, have you seen uh, anyone looking like us come through? Uh, so you pull out the pictures of those individuals that you got? No, I pull out some cash and oh, then, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. and I just ask in general, have you seen anyone like us come through? It's almost, it, she's happy to see the money. And she reaches down and she grabs the money. Uh, it starts to kind of like pull it from your, from your hand. And then almost like her facial expression changes. It almost gets like where she gets this like almost cranky look on her face. And says that, yeah, it's about 2 a.m. last night. They didn't leave a tip. And she kind of takes takes your money and it almost seems to like have put her in a bad mood. And she starts to back away from you a little bit. I was going to say, I hold on stiff to the money before she takes it. Okay, yeah, she's trying and to pull it from you. <laughs> I say, do you remember what they look like? I mean, one was a, a dark, scare, dark skinned woman. One was a lighter skinned woman. Um, they all seem to be like really sh upset and stressed out. They were meeting with somebody else or something like that and got into some fight. I think one of them got taken to the marshal or something like that, but I don't know. You'll have to ask somebody else. They kind of ticked me off and I just kind of went back and took my smoke break. I release the money and I say, thank you. Hmm. Uh, and then I turn and just look at the bar and I'm just looking around, uh, seeing where all my where my troops are. Yeah, you see that they're they're kind of just standing around in their positions. Uh, Zimieski holding it holding it down at the at the door, just looking back and forth. Uh, Gunnery Sergeant Mason just comes out of the restroom door. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that woman that was kind of sitting at the bar, like drowning her sorrows, just starts just starts laughing at almost like nothing. Like she's just like. <laughs> And then her head like hits the bar for a second. She starts like, looks like she's like sweating a little bit too. 
I turned to her and I tapped the bar, put my hand down next to her so she kind of sees my hand. I kind of gets her attention. She picks her head and up, looks at your hand, and then follows your arm up to your face. <laughs> I just say, looks like you're having a good time. <laughs> is, that, is that what you call this? That's, that's This is what, that's what you call this. Uh. I, and then I just say, sounds like you need to get something off your chest. Yeah, need I'm, to say anything? I'm, I'm, I'm stuck here. Stuck here. My ship, it's all busted, needs repairs. But they got this stinking suspension of traffic. Can't get out of here. I can't get the parts that I need. Um, I just say, uh, it's tough times. Just stay safe, keep your head low, and you'll make it out of here. She and I kind of just turn and walk away. <laughs> as you're walking away, you hear that laughing start again, and it fades as you walk farther away from her. Captain's <laughs> going to look over at Iona. <clears throat> I don't know if you heard that. Apparently, we will be heading to the marshal's office soon. You may want to prepare a route. It's all in here, man. All up here. So then I go up um, to Mason and Zim, or how do you, how do you say the name again? I think it's Zimieski. Is it like Zimieski? A... That's it. Zimieski. 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 Sir, thank you. <laughs> I just I just call you Z because I just butcher it every time. <laughs> Roger that. <laughs> I just he's, uh, he's he's uh, he's obviously annoyed, but also respects your authority and is so used to it. He kind of just like just sucks it in, shakes his head, yes, sir. And I go, Z Mason, you guys see or hear anything? No, sir. Just been watching this door, making sure there's no funny movements. Checking my ammo, make sure I got everything in place. I think we're good here. Talk to these guys here. All right. But uh, I'd like to walk around the room a little bit and see what's up. Sounds good. Um, go ahead, Z. Keep an eye on them. Hammer still at the door, and I step outside so I can get clear comms to uh, talk to Mason and Iona to give them the information um, that uh, the marshal to head to the marshal's office and to prep for it once we're done here. So, I make my way outside. Yeah, and uh, and Zim and Mason are staying inside currently. Yes. Okay. I would like for Captain Silva, uh, Sergeant Iona, and Chaplain to all make observation rolls for me. Ooh. Ooh. Nope. We're not a thing. Not a thing. <laughs> oh, we got one, one from the captain and Ooh. nothing from Chaplin. <laughs> so I will say it's because you guys are still kind of in the APC, uh, you missed this. Um, uh, captain, you see uh, in an alley coming from kind of out of the darkness of where your vision kind of stops. You see what looks to be a, a woman walking towards the oblivion bar she does look armed but she has like she's not like wielding her weapon in a like i'm going to get ready to shoot someone uh aggressive manner but she has it like kind of slung over her shoulder and it's kind of just resting on her back hip she's walking looks like with purpose towards the apc all right so I see her coming, I get on the comms, and I tell Chaplin and um, Iona to get eyes on the uh, lady coming down and to someone check one of the, to get into the turret. Is Are they turrets that you um, actually 
are in or is it automated? Um, they can control it from the command center if they if they wish to. Okay, um, I'll tell Iona uh, to get on one of the weapons and to just watch the lady coming uh, down that she's armed. No problem, well, I mean, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And Captain will and... arrange to get eyes on and just now keep monitoring this newcomer as well. Oh. Yeah, you get a, uh, a monitor feed, like you can adjust the, there's like cameras on the APC as well, where you get this like monitor feed of this woman just kind of walking by herself. She's wearing this like thick white, almost like snow suit and pretty extensive, what looks to be like almost like a nice combat boot as she's walking down this, the icy snowy street. She's, like, she's walking down the street, has this gun slung over her shoulder, looking at the APC as she's walking straight towards, um, towards you guys. Uh, so let's go back inside. Zim and Mason, what are you guys doing while this is occurring outside? Go to the table where the two people, uh, I think those the ones that you said, are looking anxious. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of a, like, I'm not getting you clearly through the microphone. Um, walked over to the table okay. uh, where the two were at. Or the two were at that you said. I think you said they were anxious, the anxious ones. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. It cut out as soon as you said. I said, I said hey, what's up? Uh, yeah. hey. Nothing. What's yeah. what's going on? First time in town. Is this a good place for a drink? It's it's pretty good, I guess. He kind of looks over at his, his companion. The companion just is like looking at him and then looks back at you. And they seem to be of little words right now. She's starting to turn and put on this small talk. <laughs> yeah. Trying to find some people. Wondered if you might have seen anybody, other military come through. I know you can tell the cut of a military when you see him. I mean, what's it to you? Well, just trying to be friendly. Didn't just asking if they, if you'd seen anybody. The other, the other guy he's sitting with kind of looks up and he's like, "Hey, why don't you go be friendly somewhere else?" You're a lot of help. Thanks a lot. You got it. Uh, uh, Zmi kind of uh, moves to the other side of the front door and just sort of peeks inside this cloak room, trying not to, like, barge in and scare anyone, but is just looking around, poking his head in. Yeah. See uh, if there's anything there. I mean, nothing that would stand out or be of anything interesting for what you guys are looking for. I mean, but yeah. And then, no, uh, nobody present in there either. So, and then anticipating a, a long trip in the vehicle, he's going to take the opportunity to utilize the head, uh, <laughs> over here. Cause you never know <laughs> one last one before you get on the ship. And you gotta... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, and, well, go, 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 go ahead, go ahead, back in, back into that okay. restroom for a second. Go ahead, back in that yeah. restroom. So, so Zmi goes back into the into the restroom. Uh, what are you doing at this time? As you kind of got the cold shoulder, uh, Mason. What are you? What would you do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for Z to to help and maybe escort these two outside to to get some more cooperation with them. Okay, uh, you. But do, I'll wait. Until... Yeah, you do notice that it seems like they are like pushing their drinks aside and they both stand up and they both kind of look like they're just going to casually walk towards the door. Yeah, we've got two coming towards the door that might look a bit, uh, might have some knowledge. Um, I'll copy that. So I'll say copy that. We have some, we have a uh, one approaching uh, from outside um, follow those two out, uh, 
and just keep an eye on them. But let Z gotcha. know and Hammer to follow out with you. Yeah, Z's disappeared. I don't know where he went. Well, he find him. Um, tell Hammer. Iota, tell Iota Hammer and him. Chaplin know exactly where Z is. <laughs> they got video like, feed. you think they cut the cams off of this man, but like, no, totally. <laughs> Safety first, never separate the party, can't cut the camps off. <laughs> Chaplin just ain't saying nothing because nobody's asked him anything. Just <laughs> so good. <laughs> All right, so they do make their way. So you're just kind of, you're just letting them go and kind of following them, Mason. Yep. And yep. are you going to stay back just a little bit to wait on Z to get out of the restroom? Uh, he can handle his own. I'll, I'll follow okay. them out, like Captain said. <laughs> okay. I don't have to wait for Z. He didn't leave his hand held in the in the head. Okay. So you are uh, walking through these. They're, they're kind of like these electronic sliding doors that open up, and these two individuals start walking out with Gunnery Sergeant Mason just following you know, a couple steps behind, not to uh, not to put too much pressure, and follows them out. And that's where we're going to end our first episode of Alien Destroyer of Worlds. Cool. So